and welcome to the podcast. I'm Marisa. And I'm Mariana. And we're the Chromeister Sisters. As a reminder, this podcast is rated T for Teen for strong language and mature themes. If you like your podcast, um, you know, nice and family friendly, you know, maybe they don't talk about adult stuff. I don't know, man. What's adult stuff? Anyway, if they don't talk about taxes and Nancy Drew, then... <laughs> You know, head on over to her very own podcast, Unlocked. <laughs> yeah, Unlocked. They talk about, talk to people about things and stuff. They it's recently, been a long week. They recently spoke to the voice actress of Kiri uh, from The Shattered Medallion, and she sounds yeah. exactly like Kiri sounds. Oh. So that she just used her actual voice, except put on a slightly New Zealand accent because she's actually English. Gotcha. Which, you know, it's easy to go from English to New Zealand ish. 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 Um, before <laughs> we start the podcast today, we want to say that there has been a Midnight in Salem update. Oh, what? They have shared some concept a, art. A thing. character. Yeah. A character. <laughs> so concept art for a character, um, for a judge. Uh, the first male character that they've actually shared some art yeah. for. Um, and it's just concept art when it's supposed to come out sometime in the next six months. It's interesting. Like, I understand that we've, um, they've, they've, they've never been big on, um, you know, showing us, us updates as they work. Yeah. And, I don't, and I mean, prior to this whole, two year de- three year debacle um <laughs> four year four year four Shit, years yeah, now almost four years um but you know pr- prior to this whole debacle they they didn't like giving us any more information until they had like yeah a gameplay trailer like a few weeks before it was released yeah pretty much um so. but that's not acceptable in this case <laughs> Just, yeah. you know, just yeah. a thought. You know. But we have been given that, and they have told us that we will be receiving additional characters, not instead of the yes. characters from 2016, Why but sure additional characters. Help? So They took away characters. It's like, Jesus, is this what you guys have been doing? I was like, are the other characters scrapped? What is going on? <gasps> so I asked them on Twitter, and they did say it's in addition to the other characters. So... They're just adding more characters on. So there's that. But what are we going to talk about today, sister? We're going to talk about thing uh, accessibility in the games. I was going to try to be clever about it, but accessibility in the Nancy Drew games. <laughs> yeah. So first, we want to just, before anyone says, well, you know, how are you guys going to talk about that? You guys are hypocrites. You don't, you're not accessible to people who are hard of hearing. We know if you guys We're read, working on that. Yeah, if you guys read <laughs> our our goal for our um, Patreon is to be able to uh, get transcripts made of the episodes. The thing is, is yeah. that Ariana and I are both hard of hearing ourselves. We both mm-hmm. have uh, issues with hearing and audio processing disorders on top of that. So we are unable to do our own captions. Uh, and captions, transcriptions take money. So we can't just pay for it ourselves. So if you guys would like to see transcripts for it, uh, you can donate to our Patreon, become patrons. And that is our first goal. So, and we already have someone on board who is, would love to do our transcripts once we can afford them. So just putting that out there. But we want to talk about the Nancy Drew games in specific, what are they doing right for accessibility in video games? And what are they doing wrong? <laughs> what they can improve <laughs> upon in accessibility. Um, if you guys are on the Clue Crew Discord, which I will link to in the description, um, you have witnessed my rants um, <laughs> about accessibility. Uh, and you've, if you've gone to any of our streams while we're playing the games, you've... Yeah. You've witnessed some of our rants, especially uh, about things that we do not think are very accessible um, in the Nancy Drew games and in other games as well. I will rant yep. about other things, too. Yeah. Um, but I want to just start with what they're doing well, what they've always done well. And yeah. 
in my opinion, the number one thing is captions. It's not yes. something that's an industry standard, and it should be. Um, yes. But there are captions, not just for what characters are saying, but there's also descriptive captions. So for, like, if Nancy is, like, she hears footsteps, or if she hears, like, something goes splat, or a squelch. Um, <laughs> um, there is a descriptive caption to tell us what that sound is um, for people who can't, who are hard of hearing or deaf, who can't hear it themselves. They can at least know what's going on. They're not missing anything in the story. Um, and there are so many games that don't have that. And it seems yeah. like at this point, it should not be an optional thing. Yeah, It's, uh, it's not asking for a lot. So I, it's, it's, yeah, it's like you're already having to write a script. <laughs> you're already are having funny... to write in, <laughs> right? It's it's already written. It's not like your your characters are are ad libbing. I mean, I don't know, man. <laughs> you're, and you're already having to write down where what you would want the sound effects to be and stuff mm-hmm. when you're writing a script for a game. So it honestly is putting the company at no. Like, there's no extra stuff they have to go through, really, nope. to make it happen. So, th- that should be an industry standard. And it somehow isn't, but we're really glad that Nancy Drew has been doing it since the 90s. Yes. like Good job, Nancy Drew. Yep. Good job, Her Interactive. <laughs> Thank you, guys. You've been doing it <laughs> since before it was cool. Uh, <laughs> because, I mean, if you think about it, like, in the 90s, things were, like, either voiced or they were captioned. Yeah. You rarely got both. So mm-hmm. it was really nice that in this they were both. But yeah. the captions are have always been really helpful for me. I know we like to make fun of the captions and yes. some of the things that they say. Because <laughs> some of them are ridiculous. But it definitely helps me when I have no clue what that sound is supposed to be. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm like, that is a sound. My brain doesn't know what that sound is supposed to be, <laughs> but it's a sound. So, um, another thing that they do really well is, like I was saying, the other side of that coin is they voice the characters. Yes. Because that's the other side of it is that it's like, if you provide then all of this text and then it's not voiced, it is makes it completely inaccessible to people who are visually impaired. Mm-hmm. So, the fact that they also have voiced characters makes it so that you can also have people with visual impairments playing the game as well. And so that helps a lot. <laughs> and someone with both visual and audio. <laughs> Very helpful. Y'all it is. Just super. <laughs> it, it is. It's helpful. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's the fact that all of the characters' lines are are voiced, and they generally are voiced in a way that isn't too hard to understand. I can't think of many character or any characters that are done in a way that are hard to understand. No. no, that is definitely one thing that they do very well is they make sure all of their voice actors really enunciate. Yeah. Like even if they're supposed to be heavily accented, um like like Fatima, we still know what she's saying because she's hitting all of her goddamn consonants. <laughs> it's like Yeah. And it's helpful it's, it's because then good. it's very helpful. I'm also being provided with captions, so I know what they're yeah. saying. Plus, it's, it, there's never anything worse in in any kind of of, of media like this. It, it's it's never good to have an actor or or character or whatever that you can't understand. Yeah. The the there's the boom hour, and that's like it, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> like Donald Duck, and you're all like, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. But I think that they've done a they did a really good job of making sure that at least all of the characters are voiced. So I appreciate yes. that. Yeah. Thank you, Her Interactive. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last thing that they've done really well, in my opinion, from the very Not beginning. Not the last thing they've done well at all, just the last thing they've done really well. Really well. Is that it just being a point and click adventure on its own yes. makes it more accessible than other kinds of games. Um Especially since it uses a mouse, it doesn't use a controller, means that mm-hmm. it, it doesn't require as much fine motor control 
as a lot of other games. Like if you had to use a, a keyboard like WASD controls or if you had to mm-hmm. use a controller, it takes a lot more um, – it puts more strain on your hands and stuff like that. And that's like – I can't play Minecraft for too long. <laughs> otherwise, it hurts yeah. my hands. Like if that – if that want if you guys want to like see a like have a insight into what it's like <laughs> being someone who can't put too much strain on their hands like yeah. holding down the w key hurts right i can't play yeah. any games with controllers so point and click games are great because you're not putting any strain on any part of your hand you're not having to move very much of you at yeah. a time so i can play a point and click game with my wrist brace on i can't do a controller game with my wrist brace on stuff like that yeah, yeah that was a point of, of concern when they were talking about um changing game engines because they were also talking about changing um game play yeah they were like oh yeah well, maybe you guys would like that and like, no <laughs> everyone made it Please. very clear <laughs> point and click is great just just stick with it yeah <laughs> It's not for everyone, but it's good for this. <laughs> yeah, especially since it also means that you don't have to have, especially in the later games, you do, don't have to have very fine motor control because there are such huge parts of the screen that are like you mouse over that you can click on to go in to look at different things. It's mm-hmm. not like you're just having to zone in on one thing <laughs> Um at a time like in the in the really early games it was a lot harder because it you know sometimes it was you'd have to be over like one tiny area to be able to click on something oh my god and it was the worst <laughs> that kind of thing is hard but it got a lot better as the games went on mostly because screens got a lot bigger <laughs> yeah that was very helpful <laughs> <laughs> so you had more pixels to work with um but it it just means that you're able to, um, like, the difference between, like, Message in a Haunted Mansion and Ghost of Thornton Hall of the area of which you can click on to go in to check things is a, a great improvement. Mm-hmm. And it helps a lot. Definitely. Especially since I was able to, I played some of Ghost of Thornton Hall with our mom, who is legally blind, um... <laughs> <laughs> literally she just uh you know without her glasses on and everything so we are sitting at the computer pretty far back and she was still able to maneuver everything around with it and and see where everything needed to be seen so pretty good accessibility in that kind of sense yeah that's good so anything else that you think they did right <clears throat> i mean not, not that I'm thinking of, but maybe, maybe I'll come up with more. Yeah, I think we'll definitely <laughs> come up with more in a, in a minute. Yeah, <laughs> as, as we're talking about the things that not just Nancy Drew, but all games really need <sighs> yeah. to work on. I'm gonna, oh, yeah. I'm gonna say most games have this <laughs> issue, but specifically the things that we've been ranting about for years. <laughs> but I'm gonna start this one off for Ariana is. They really have a problem with fonts um, in Nancy Drew. And they have to think about visually impaired people and dyslexia-friendly fonts. Yes. Please, for the love of God. It's... It's it's one thing to have to solve a puzzle. It's another thing to have to make your brain figure out what it is first. (laughs) Yeah. Because that's that's what it is. That's seeing letters and or 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 patterns. Also, they, they all <laughs> kinds of, of 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 things that they do that are not good for the dyslexic brain. <laughs> yeah, um, especially like you're just doing White Wolf Bicycle Creek mm-hmm. in Julius McQuaid's journal. Mm. <laughs> that that font. I am not decoding that. Is terrible. <laughs> the font. To begin with is terrible. And then Trapper Dan's journal, the font is terrible. And then mm-hmm. there is encoded stuff yeah. within a font you can't read. Mm-hmm. And it's like, hey, guys. <laughs> Everybody's got either, like, weird-looking chicken scratch or or weird, like, loopy handwriting. Yeah. That is just 
very visually confusing. <laughs> the thing is, is the question is, well, how can we fix this? Well, one thing, just it's really easy. There's a bunch of fonts that are accessible fonts, for one thing. If you want to use fonts that aren't accessible fonts, what you can do are things like what Life is Strange does, which is you can click a button that says read and it pulls it up in just mm-hmm. Arial font. Say that, that, um, right? They do the same thing in like Red Dead Redemption oh, 2. Yeah, exactly. Y- you, it, they've got the pretty little scrawling, mm-hmm. so you can look at that and you can see what they visually wanted you to see. But then you click read and look, it's in text you can actually yep. read. It picks it up in just like Arial, something that is like accessible. Or mm-hmm. you can come at it from a way that's probably even a little better um, in some ways is the Secret of Shadow Ranch way of having it read aloud. Yes. Because that's that a very helps good way. people who are visually impaired so they can have it read to them. Right? Mm-hmm. So it is good if you have something that is a big font so they can read it. You know, so you can click read and it comes up in a big clear font. That helps. That works. But yes. it's even better if it's read aloud. So you don't have just huge blocks of text. <laughs> even if it's a screen reader, like generated reader inside of your game engine. Yeah. Like, even if you just have Microsoft Sam in there to read things out to people, that would be helpful. Have a mm-hmm. button that makes that happen. That would be helpful for people. That would make it accessible for people. But... Definitely, it's just currently anything written, it's just like, I don't know. (laughs) Maybe I'll get what's going on here. Maybe I won't. (laughs) So you're going to have fun um, with uh, Del Toro's journal in Ransom of Seven Ships. Because that's usually my puzzle. (sighs) It's just they're so hard to read. Yeah, because it's hard to read. And then it's the switching letters around to put them into real (laughs) words. So that can be a little easier. Actually, I'm lucky (laughs) and my brain reworked itself. To make anagrams easier. Yeah. You're like, dyslexia? You mean anagram helper. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) So that's that's that on that. Um, but going in there is another thing is for visually impaired people is nothing. None of these puzzles are colorblind friendly. It's like, no, I understand that these games are mostly geared at, at women and girls. But that mm-hmm. doesn't mean that you because it's very rare for women to be colorblind. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean that none of your fans and none of the people playing the game are going to be... Right? (laughs) Like, you're still going to have colorblind people trying to play the games. You have to make these puzzles solvable by colorblind people. Because the Tessera puzzle in Phantom of Venice is not solvable by someone who is colorblind. There are reds and greens and browns all mixed in there together. I I have a little bit of trouble with it, and... I see color just fine. But it's just like, hmm. And then, of course, the otter butt puzzle, as we put Ugh. it, in Haunting of Castle Malloy. Because some people have, like, issues with telling the difference between specifically blues and greens and purples. And then they're all blue and green and purple. And they look exactly the same. So Well, great. <laughs> that kind of thing. It's really easy. Because all you have to do is make them not the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. Like... How about the green one looks different than the blue one, which looks different than the purple one? If you are really set on using those colors, just have them be different artwork. Like, yeah. But what makes sense is that there are all kinds of websites. I know this because my boyfriend, when he does his, makes posters and presentations for for science conferences, he makes sure they're all colorblind safe because you don't want to put a... uh, (laughs) put a figure up on a PowerPoint presentation in front of a bunch of scientists and have no one be able to tell the difference between different, uh, different plot points. Right. (laughs) So there are all sorts of websites that help you tell what are going to be, uh, contrasting enough for people who are colorblind. So if you are making a game 
Please make sure you're doing that, especially if you have puzzle elements. Yeah. Because, mm, that Mm-mm. just must be so awful to be like, hmm, all of these little gray squares, <laughs> all of these uh, yes. brown squares. <laughs> Not sure where to put them. But I sure see them. <laughs> because, like, just think about how it looks like in Phantom of Venice. Like, everything just being muddy brown. <laughs> right? Mmm. <laughs> muddy brown. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Like, come on. Uh, and then, while we're on the subject of puzzles, <laughs> my my biggest issue, which has always been the most frustrating thing for me, the thing that has made me rage quit two specific games, Shout at Water's Edge, Secret of the Old Clock, is puzzles that require fine motor control. Um, so think of the calligraphy in Shadow at Water's Edge. Ugh. Especially yes. on Senior Detective. While I was streaming that, I was just about to just... Mm-mm. I... Yeah. I have had slight tremors in my hands since I was, like, 12. <laughs> and then yeah. the stupid dress that you have to yeah have i'm not i'm not looking forward to doing that one in secret of the old clock that is my uh, that's one of my absolute least favorite mm-hmm. uh, it doesn't like the fact that it takes such like precision it, that's not a good for one thing like completely able-bodied people have issues with those yeah. puzzles like so right? it's a it's bad puzzle design brenda um, it's just, <laughs> I don't know why. Just, it, 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 it is. That's, yeah. if it's something, like, specifically the dress in Secret of the Old Clock is just awful. Um, and there are a bunch of puzzles in the first, like, ten games where it's, like, pixel perfect, like the parquet floor in... Oh, yeah. Message in a Haunted Mansion or the books in Danger on Deception Island. Sometimes you have to get those exactly right. And it's like... Yeah. Um, anything that is that... If it has to be pixel perfect, it's not accessible. No. Um, because you have to think about, is this something that someone with a tremor could do? Is this something that someone who has spasms can do? Who has, you know who doesn't have complete control over their hands, who's going to get tired easily, who's going to... Because that's that's what it is. Yeah. Like, I have had to take out my <clears throat> drawing tablet for the calligraphy. <laughs> or yep. my current laptop has a touchscreen. <laughs> that's what I did last time. I just used the touchscreen. Like a cheater. Like a cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. Like the cheater I am. Because <laughs> that worked... It worked. It worked way better than their stupid thing. Scram? Oh, I hate scram. You take something that I'm already having issues with, and then you make Nancy act like she's drunk? Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm like, I am already. I already have tremors. (laughs) I, I, I cannot express to you, her, enough how irritating this is. That I am having one, this 17-year-old girl is, like, <laughs> extorting me. <laughs> so I'm already irritated. Right. Two, I'm, I'm trying to do this precise movement. And three, Nancy is for some reason drunk while I'm doing it. Um, <laughs> so I'm already having issues doing it. So the fact that it's, like, is bad. <laughs> That's bad. Please never do anything like that i just realized um visually guys yeah i'm sorry risa is a is a bobbing around and weaving as she's attempting to throw a dart sorry people listening i just realized she's been doing this for like five minutes now (laughs) pretty much (laughs) but yeah it's 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 insane there's there's no way and she does this A lot when the game, when darts come up. Yeah, it's darts and just, mm, 
anything like that, or the wasps is another one where you Ugh. require some fine motor control, um, which, ugh. Actually, you know, Legend of the Crystal Skull, Crystal Skull has a bunch of, yes, Crystal oh. Skull has a bunch of uh, ones like that, because it also mm-hmm. has the stupid um, ski ball, which requires fine motor control for some reason. It's like, you know what you need to do? Line this up exactly right. Otherwise, it's going to go into the same one it's gone into every other single Line time you've done Line up exactly this. right so that it bounces off the walls the correct amount of time so that it goes into the correct hole. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if you're just barely a little too high, it's going all the way to the back one. Yeah. No, it's going to come all the way back to the front. <laughs> it's going to go pew. Back it's going to go front. right back into the one you just did by having it on the complete other side of the board. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I love this that game. how life works. But that game is so inaccessible. Another it thing really that it is. does is, um, I didn't write this down, but poor contrast is another thing yeah. that the games do a lot. So games like... Legend of the Crystal Skull, Ghost of Thornton Hall, uh, Shadow at Water's mm-hmm. Edge. Great mood setters, but that is really bad contrast, so yeah. it's really hard to see. Um, so it's things like where we used to just turn the gamma up on our monitor mm-hmm. really high because we <laughs> couldn't see it very well. Um, my mom made me, like when we were playing Ghost of Thornton Hall, she made me turn up the brightness on the computer a whole bunch because um, yeah. she couldn't see it. Which I completely understand. <laughs> it's a dark game. They did yeah. not balance it very well. I understand that games try to go for atmosphere, but you have to balance atmosphere with accessibility. Um, because a game can feel spooky, but if no one can see what's going on, then people aren't going to enjoy it. Make it spooky with mm, with the coloring, with the, you know, you know just sort of... <sighs> The, with the audio, with everything. Use everything at your disposal to create an atmosphere. You know? Yeah. Pretty much. Don't just make everything really hard to see. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, Ghost of the Hall was too dark to play on the tablet, some people say. Yeah, I can oh. definitely see that. Because you can't adjust any contrast settings or anything like that. So, Yeah. Whereas other games that are really good contrast-wise are, like, um, Secret of Shadow Ranch. That one's really good. You can yeah. see a lot. Um, Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon is actually pretty good. Everything's very easy to see, in my opinion. <laughs> you know, on the other end of the spectrum, there's um, all of the snow in... in uh... <laughs> What Wolf of Icicle Creek? Too bright. It's so you're too bright. No idea. I can't see. Can't see. Things. Yeah. Uh, it's not fun. Mm. <laughs> That's very difficult. <laughs> or everything is too gray. So there's no contrast between it. So like Danger on Deception Island. Like I know it feels like we're asking for a lot here. <laughs> it's not though. <laughs> it's not. It's really not. Oh, Haunting <gasps> Castle Malloy is another one that's way too dark. Haunting oh Castle Malloy. Gosh. I can't see shit. I cannot see shit in that game. I'm like, everything's just kind of blue. I honestly have, like, there's so much in Haunting of Castle Malloy, I just miss every single time. Mm -hmm. I don't see it. Like, that game is one of the least accessible games, especially since there's a mini game where you fucking, there's a quick time event mini game. The drums. Oh, I'm so bad at that one. The fucking drums. I'm so bad at that one. Attempting to get the sheep in the dark <laughs> oh yes that's just it's it's bad that's fine motor control and that's that is if you want to see a game that encompasses all of the things that we say don't do haunted castle malloy you have mm-hmm. to do all sorts like you have to make her walk around with your mouse and everything right yep um yep yeah <laughs> you have to make her walk around with your mouse it's too dark to see anything there's colorblind stuff. There's a bunch <laughs> of stuff in in terrible handwriting. Oh, so in, much in terrible Fiona's room in the tower. 
Uh, there's a quick time event game that takes fine motor control. So what we're saying <laughs> is the least accessible game in the series is Haunting of Castle Roy. Yes. That's what we're going to say. Whereas Sea of Darkness was dark the whole time, but it was actually, I could see pretty well. There's enough contrast. It was, it was, it was contrasted enough. There were the Everything was very sharp mm-hmm. and um, defined. There was enough. That was um, good. There was enough brightness, and all the characters were well lit enough. Whereas yeah, Kyler it was, it is they... in complete darkness. <laughs> Kyler, Kyler, who? Kit, you're like you see half of his face, <laughs> right? It's it's very difficult to even make out the fact that he's got a black eye. Yeah, you're like, like oh, <laughs> does he? I don't know. Is, is, is the coloring just weird here? I, I, I can't tell. The rest of this game is already so hard to see. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. That's, so, yeah, I think we've, we've bitched about the able-bodiedness enough. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what we think that the Nancy Drew games uh, have done well and could use some work on uh, accessibility-wise. Um, if you guys have something else that you think we've missed, then please let us know on our social media, our Twitter, our Facebook, our YouTube, hmm, our Twitter. Hmm. You know what? Just Google us and then you see where we pop up, man. And our fancy website, <laughs> cormeistersisters.knifefightclub.com. Yeah, that too. <laughs> and Instagram. And Instagram. <laughs> and then you can find us on, on iTunes and Google Podcasts and 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 then and, 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 and Spotify. Yeah. And and you can just tell us how much you love us there. It's true. Well, all hopefully those things. back on Google Podcasts soon. They weren't. Did you go down? We're up until episode 81, and then it stopped indexing our feed, and I don't know why, but I'm working on it. We'll be back soon. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Not sure. But as a reminder, you can also subscribe to our Twitch to get access to our cute little wine glass emote during our <laughs> streams. And if you would like to see our podcast to be more accessible, you could be, you can become a patron on Patreon. So, as a reminder, I'm Risa. And I'm Mariana. And we're the Crowmaster Sisters. And we're asking you guys to stay sleuthy. Sleuthy.